Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to start the first of a new series of going through a Django REST framework crash course. So in this, this series, we're going to go over various different parts of the Django REST framework, hopefully give you a good idea about how to use it and how to actually build a full API um, with different features within it. So in this first video, we'll just be a quick kind of walk through overview of everything, make sure you understand what this is, is how to use it on a very basic level, how to get it set up and all that sort of stuff. So before we begin, I go. I already have this folder open here um, and in this text editor here in Sublime with the terminal window opening so we can set things up here. Uh, so make sure you have that and you're going to get started. So if we pull up the docs here, uh, you'll see if we scroll down the main page and there'll be a link to this in the description below as well. Um, we have some information here on installation and setup and a basic example. Uh, this will be pretty useful if you want to go through this as well. Um, this will be there as well. So we'll start here. We need to install Django REST framework. We don't need Markdown. We're also going to install Django as well. So uh, let's go ahead and do that first. Um, but I'm on Linux and I don't have uh, a virtual environment set up yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I already have virtual ENV set up. You could also use, uh, if you look in the quick start, if I go to tutorial, quick start, um, you can also use uh, Python 3 M V E N V and then create an ENV environment from there. And that's up to you if you want to do that way, if you don't have virtual ENV installed. Um, but in my case, I'll type virtual ENV space ENV, and this will create a virtual environment in this directory here. I can activate it on Linux, and I think Mac the same as source env slash bin slash activate. If you're on Windows, let me look up that command. I'm not sure what it is, but it, I'm pretty sure it's different. So uh, you'll need to just Google, HUD, Google that. You should be able to find it um, to activate your virtual environment on Windows. Okay, so now we have a virtual environment installed. We can go ahead and do a pip install Django and then a space and then Django REST framework. We'll install both of those packages. Okay, perfect. Now we have that installed. The next step, if you look at the docs here, is to uh, start a project, Django admin start a project, and then start an app. So in this tutorial series, uh, we're going to do something kind of similar to what we did in the Django series where we create like this music um, app thing where we can store artists and albums and all that sort of stuff. That'll give us some good ways to create relationships between different objects and do some other stuff like that. Uh, so we'll do that as well here, uh, at least something kind of similar. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project, Django-admin start project. And since we're making a music API, I'm going to go ahead and just call it uh, music underscore API. And that creates that music API folder. We can CD into it. Okay, and now that we're inside of here, we'll go ahead and run Python 3, um, or maybe Python, depending on your OS, uh, manage.py start app. And, and since we're creating a catalog, or since we're creating a bunch of music artists and everything else, we'll create a catalog app to store our artists and albums, all that sort of stuff. So we'll do manage.py start app catalog. And then if we look inside of our music API folder, we have this catalog here with all of our uh, basic setup for Django right there. Okay, and that should be it for this. Let's go ahead now and add the REST framework to our music API and to our settings. And I guess I should say before I continue, uh, if you're not familiar with Django at all, you should probably go through and watch the Django series first, just because there's lots of Django specific things like the settings.py file uh, that we're probably not gonna talk about too much. So uh, I'd probably familiarize myself a little bit with Django before starting the series. Um, but I'll try to explain everything as best as I can in case you're not. Um, but inside of our installed apps here, I'll add rest underscore framework and put a comma here at the end of that. And then we should be good there. The last step here for uh, kind of setup here is we'll run a Python 3 manage.py and then we'll go ahead and run um, migrate to set up our database and migrate everything over to our database. And now we should have this db.sqlite 3 showing up over here. Okay, now we should be set up and ready to start building something. In this video, in this first video, we're just going to go over some really basic stuff. Uh, I want to just kind of go through a quick overview of kind of the workflow within Django REST framework to kind of make that familiar. Uh, we, won't, we won't go into too much detail on each piece of it yet, but hopefully this will give you kind of an idea about the steps involved in creating something in the API in, Jing, in the Django REST framework. So in this example, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a user API endpoint so you can uh, create users, you can get all users, you get a specific user, 
uh, all those basic tasks, right? The create, read, update, delete, um, all those will be available to us uh, at the end of this. So what we'll do is we'll do all of this inside of our catalog uh, app first. So typically you'll go into your model set py, you know, create some sort of model here uh, with all your fields you'll need in the database. Um, and this will create a table in the database. Um, in this case, though, we're going to use the built-in Django user model for simplicity for this first video. So we'll ignore this until a future video. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we need to, next after we have our models, or in this case, if we use a built-in model, we'll skip this step. But after that, we want to go ahead and create a serializer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file in here inside our catalog. I'm going to save this as serializers.py. Now, if we jump into the Django docs, if you go under API guide, you can find all the information you need for anything in Django. So in the case of serializers, uh, we'll have another video in the future going in more in depth about this. But up here at the top, you can kind of see what a serializer is. A serializer allows complex data such as query sets and model instances uh, to be converted into Python, uh, native Python data types, and then easily rendered into JSON, XML, or other content types. We'll use JSON in this example. And so what this is doing is converting data. So we take our Django data, our query sets, and any sort of model instances that we created in our models at PY, and we can convert them into Python data types, which then we can easily get into this JSON data that we need to actually send as a response um, from our API. So this is just kind of a conversion step we do from our models to eventually send the data. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll go more in depth about that in the future if it doesn't, um, but that's just kind of a basic overview for now of what that's doing. So we'll go ahead and do, we'll create this, so now we'll go ahead and create our serializers uh, for, for this uh, user model. So first we got to import that built-in user model. So we'll do from Django.contrib.auth.models import user. And then we'll go ahead and do from REST framework import serializers. And those will give us access to all of the built-in serializers you can find down here. Um, we'll go in more details on these in a future video. For now, though, we're going to use just a really basic one. So we'll create a class and we'll call it user serializer. And this is how you create a serializer. You create a class and you can pass in the type of serializer you want to create. What do you want to inherit from? In our case, we'll do a model serializer. And then instead of here, we create a class meta, the capital E. And now instead of here, we can actually define our serializer. So we need two fields, a model to be user, and a fields variable to be all the fields we want, which will pass an ID, username, and email. And this would normally come from our models.py, each of these fields. Uh, but since these are built into our user model, we have access to these automatically. So. That's what we're doing here. So on a really basic level, you create a serializer, you set the model in the fields you want to actually send as a response. And then once you have a serializer created, you can create a view. And so there's already a views.py file. Inside of here, this is where we define the actual API endpoint that we want to create. So in this case, we're going to use something called a view set that will do most of the work for us. Um, and a view set will create the uh, create, read, update, and delete paths for us automatically. So this kind of does everything for us. And for this first video, we'll make things super easy. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and import a few things. Um, this, imp this render import, we can delete that. That's for just regular Django. Since we're using an API, we don't need uh, that, that line here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll do from Django dot contrib dot auth uh, dot models import that user model that we used last time we also want to go ahead and, and from rest underscore framework import view sets and we'll do from rest underscore framework import permissions and we'll talk about more about permissions in a future video uh, for now we're, we're not going to set any special permissions so uh, don't worry about that too much yet and then we'll do from catalog.serializers. We need to go ahead and import that user serializer we just created a second ago. So this is this right here should match what we created inside of our serializers.py, this class name right here. Okay, so now we have everything imported. We can go ahead and create a view set. So once again, we'll create a class and we'll call this user view set. And we'll inherit from view sets dot model view set. And then we're going to go ahead and add a doc string here. So I'm going to go and do a shift and add three 
and three more double quotations inside of here uh, we're going to go ahead and talk and we're going to add api uh, endpoint that allows users to be viewed or edited and we'll talk more about doc strings and what we can do with these later when we talk about documenting our API. But for now, we're going to just add that for now as just a quick description on what this view set does. Now, there's lots of ways to customize a view set, but if you want the most basic view set possible, we need three different variables a query set, which will equal something right here. We'll need a serializer class, which will be whatever serializer class we created for this API, which in this case would be our user serializer. You also need to set some permission classes. Permission classes. This will equal something else, which we'll get to here in a second as well. So there's much more we'll go into later, but for a very basic view set, uh, this is all you'll need. So we start here with this first one, this query set. Uh, well, this will be this will be what objects we want to include when we do a get all. Like we just do a get at whatever URL this is to get all the objects. What do we want to return? That, that's what goes in this line right here. So in this case, we want to go ahead and get all the users. And then we'll go ahead and just sort them and order them um, newest to oldest. So if you're familiar with Django, we can use our model name dot objects dot all to get every single object we have and do a dot order by to then sort these by something. And we'll put a string here and do minus date underscore joined. Date underscore join is a field on our user uh, model that comes built in with Django. So we'll order it by putting the minus means we'll do newest first, oldest last, um, and then dot all will get every single object, user object uh, in the database. And now we have our query set defined. We can go ahead and define our serializer class. So this will be our user serializer, which we already imported. So user serializer, and that's the serializer we created in the previous step. And then finally permission classes. For now, I'm not gonna explain this too much. We'll need to put a list and inside there put permissions dot allow any and this will just allow anyone to access this route and we'll get more into customizing this and and what this does uh, in a future video but for now we'll just put that right there and that is our view set so you can see here how this is pretty easy to do there isn't too many steps involved um, the last step is we need to set a url to actually go to this view set when we go to that url and so we could create a URLs inside of our catalog, but for simplicity, I'm going to go into stick to just using our URLs.py file inside of our music API folder here. So we jump in here, we can go ahead and make some updates here. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these comments just to clean this up a little bit. But uh, with, with view sets, we can use this thing called the default router um, to handle creating the paths for us. So just like we have to create all the routes here, we can also create all of the uh, paths for our URLs here as well. And um, that will also be handled for us. So, and of course, in a future video, we'll go into actually manually creating them so you can see how that works as well. Um, but in this case, to make a very simple route, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and import a few things. Um, first, we want to import path. Also, want to import include. And then we're going to go ahead and import from REST framework, import routers. And this is where we'll get our default router from. And the next step will be to import our views. So from catalog, import views. And if you want to, you can rename this as whatever, but I'm gonna leave it as views for now. Now, in, outside of our URL patterns array here, what we can do is we can do a router equals routers.default router. And then what we can do is do a router.register to add a route to our router. And then we'll go ahead and put an R and then a, a single quotes here and pass in users and do a comma and then do views dot and then our, our uh, view set name in this case is user view set. So this will create all the routes we need for us automatically by using this register function. All we need to do is pass in a string. This will be the actual URL route. And then we pass in our view set that we created in the last step. So in our views.py, we create a user view set and that's what we put right here. Okay, and now the last step here is to add this to our URL pattern. So we'll create a path and at uh, the root of the project, we'll do include and we'll include the router.urls. So we can create all of our view set routes up here and then just include it down here with this step right here. And that adds all of these routes we created with a register function um, to our URL patterns list here. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Um, I kind of ran through that kind of quickly, but this is just a really basic example. Hopefully you understand the workflow. 
uh, we're going from first creating a model, then we create a serializer for that model, then we create a view for that serializer, and then from this view, we create a URL pattern to actually access the view. So it's this kind of this process of steps we're following to create an API route. And now we have that set up, let's go ahead and test it. Django has one really great way to test things out, and that is you can jump into your local host and go to 8000. And I didn't run my server yet, so let's go ahead and run our server. So we'll do a Python 3 manage.py. And you can type run server to run the, the development server. And then we come back here, refresh the page. We'll see now, so we have this kind of a, a way to view our API in the browser. And you'll notice down here, we already have our new user route showing up that we created um, through those steps. And the route is 8000 slash users because inside of our urls.py, we put users as the string here. So that's our route that we're going to here. I click on this, it will then open up this way to then, uh, we can do a git, which we don't have anything yet. We can go and add a user right here. So I can go ahead and add um, a test user, and then we'll add an email address of just test at test.com, I guess, and we'll post that. And then it shows up right here. We can do a git to get that one user. We also can get a specific user. So if we were to add another user, test user two, um, test2 at test.com we'll post that and then we'll do a git and now we're getting two users here one and two and you'll notice they're ordered as uh, newest to oldest so we did that in our setup as well uh, but now we also get a specific user so I went to this user slash one so users slash one we then get the user with the ID of one um, so the, all that's built in with our view set automatically. We can delete this user by hitting the delete button and delete. Now if we go back to our user list here and do a git on all of this, we get that one with an ID of two. So it's all set up and working great. There's a few more things we're gonna do real quick before we end this video. I'm gonna go ahead and create a super user from the terminal just so we have that available. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a python3 manage.py create super user and I'll create an admin user and we'll give it a password and there we go so I just want to make sure we had that for a future video um, but one more thing just to go over I may use insomnia at some point to test some things out um, I've a lot of different routes here from different projects, um, but what Insomnia is, is just an API client to make requests. Um, and I'm going to, and you could use something like Postman or something else, but I'm just going to use Insomnia maybe for some of these videos. So if you see me using this, uh, just real quick, what this is, um, it's just a program you can install. And if you go up here, you can create new requests. I'll create this as just a test request or whatever. Um, and then you can go ahead here. We can set the actual different, um, HTTP request types over here. Uh, we can pass in our route, we can set a body, set some headers, anything else through here. And we send that route, it will show up over here. Um, so I may use that instead of this um, at times. So if I do that, just don't want anyone to be confused. Um, that's all that is. Um, and it just, it's just going to these routes that we created over here. So uh, that's really it. But that is really it for this video. Uh, I just want to get a really basic thing set up and working uh, before we uh, went too in depth into any of the specific parts of Django. And um, we'll go over, you know, request responses, views, uh, view sets, serializers, permissions, pagination, all sorts of different things over the course of this series. Uh, so um, we'll take that step by step in future videos. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.